Okay. So our episode for tonight is Photographs in the Time of CTTO, Best Practices for Photographers and the Public. As the photographic means of communication continue to become embedded in our day-to-day -day affairs as Filipinos, discussions about ownership and fair use also become extremely relevant. Particularly in social media, photographic images are shared and reshared at the speed of thought. But together with the circulation, credit becomes an issue as the public becomes more and more acquainted with the term CTTO, a term that some would argue is not just lazy, but is also largely transgressive, infringing on the basic rights of creators and photographers. Tonight, we explore these questions with Attorney Ezekiel Valerio of the IPO Phil Bureau of Copyright and Related Rights. We will discuss the ethical, legal, and practical aspects of photo sharing and provide some best practices for both photographers and the general public. The first part will be a lecture by Attorney Valerio, while the second half will be a Q&A, uh, which is the Quentuan session. Thank you for joining us tonight for episode 19 of the Marites Talks Quentuan session entitled Photographs in the Time of CTTO, Best Practices for Photographers and the Public. So this is Photography Chismis. Our goal is to promote meaningful conversations about photography in the Philippines. Okay, some reminders and notices. This is a recorded Zoom session. You will be prompted by Zoom for your consent in the recording of this material. Also, this is the sixth time we will have a parallel live stream in Facebook. So we see that there's a lot of people in Facebook right now. The recording shall be uploaded in Photography Chismis PH and its various platforms such as, but it's not limited to Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify for educational purposes in the aim of contributing to the discourse of photography in the Philippines. This episode of the Quentuan session shall not be monetized. Derived knowledge from this program should be cited accordingly based on the conventions and laws on intellectual property in the Philippines as applicable. This Quentuan session will explore a new format. Again, as mentioned a while, a while ago, there will be a 15 to 30 minutes uninterrupted talk from our discussion. Afterwards, we will proceed with a Quentuan where we discuss the topic further. Comments and questions shall be recognized accordingly by the host and moderator as applicable. So our home is in Facebook, but uh, the recordings, the lecture recordings as well as the podcast is available in Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Also, we have started our Instagram account. This is for those people who are more interested on photographs and short-form content. So you can follow us in Instagram at Photography Chismis PH. We would like to first give our deepest gratitude to Attorney Valerio. No? So it's a Friday night, but you're here. So you're spending your, your Friday night with us. Without further ado, uh, I turn over the floor to Attorney Valerio. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sir Tony. Uh, maraming salamat for this uh, invitation by uh, Photography Chismis uh, to be part of this uh, uh, Zoom webinar, no? Uh, very timely yung ating topic for tonight, diba? Kasi nga, uh, as we all know, uh, medyo laganap na ang practice uh, among people of putting CTTO, diba? Especially when they uh, share uh, works, lalo na in social media, diba? So, uh, allow me this opportunity to uh, uh, lecture a bit about the relevant uh, copyright principles as it applies to um, photography, especially, diba? Okay, so, sige, uh, allow me to share my screen. Okay, so I hope that everyone can see my screen now. Okay, ba, klaro? Okay, so uh, as mentioned by Sir Tony, you know, so the, our topic for this evening is uh, Photography in the Time of CTTO, Best Practices for Photographers and the Public. Okay, so sige, uh, let's jump right in. First, uh, before we discuss you know, uh, CTTO and its ramifications, I think it's very important na balikan natin yung mga importanteng principles ng copyright. Yeah? Because as we all know, copyright, ito yung uh, legal protection that is extended to the owner of the rights in a literary, artistic, scholarly, or scientific work. So definitely, photographs, they are covered by copyright. Okay, walang duda doon. Our, our intellectual property code uh, specifically enumerates uh, photographic works as one of the uh, types of original works which are granted copyright protection by law. Okay? Now, it's also important to remember that the policy objective of copyright law is actually to balance the interests of rights holders with the rights of users of information. So what this basically means is, uh, hindi lang para sa authors and creators ang copyright, di ba? Alisin natin sa isip natin yung misconception na kaya lang merong copyright is para kumita yung ating mga authors and creators. Uh, that's actually a wrong notion. Why? Because ideally, there should be a balance. Okay, there should be a balance between uh, the, interests, the interests of copyright owners uh, with regard their works and upholding their rights as uh, exclusive uh, rights holders of their works, pabalansihin yan with the rights of the general public to have access to these works, to use these works, diba? So ideally, there should be a balance. And in fact, uh, meron ngang isang US case na sinabi na copyright is not primarily for the benefit of the author, 
but primarily for the benefit of the public. Why? Because, uh, as you may know, when a copyrighted work uh, has no longer uh, copyright protection due to the expiration of its term, meaning, pag natapos na ang copyright protection ng isang work, that work automatically becomes a part of the public domain. Now, when you say that a work is a part of the public domain already, it means it is free for anyone to use, no need to seek permission from any rights holder or from any owner, and usually no need to pay, uh, no need to pay royalties na, diba? Although sometimes you may need to pay uh, a certain amount for access, but it's not in it's not in the nature of royalties. Okay, so basically, we when we say that a work is in the public domain, we can clearly see that it already benefits the public because anyone can use it freely. So that is the that is the goal. That is that is that is why we incentivize our creators and artists and authors to create more works. Now, another basic principle is, of course, uh, when you ask how does an author acquire copyright protection, under our law, it specifically states that works are protected by the sole fact of their creation. Anong ibig sabihin nun? When you create a work, matik na yan, meron ka ng copyright over it. Okay? Unlike with other IP rights, katulad ng trademark or na patent, na kailangan nyo munang i-register yung inyong work before kayo magkaroon ng protection, pagdating sa copyright, an author or creator does not need to register the work in order to obtain copyright protection under the law. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Uh, when it comes to copyright the works, they are protected from the moment of their creation. Okay? Next question. How long does copyright last? Okay, now we have the general rule, and this applies to most types of literary or artistic works, diba? yung mga, such as novels, yung mga uh, written works, etc. Protection lasts during the lifetime of the author, meaning hanggat buhay yung author or creator, meron siyang copyright. And then pagkamatay niya, there's an additional 50 years after his death. Okay? So pagkamatay ng author, meron pang 50 years wherein yung copyright ay pwedeng uh, i-exercise either ng kanyang heirs or ng kanyang estate or kung sino man ang uh, nalipatan ng copyright after his death. Because take note, pwede siyang ilipat ang ownership. Meron peers wherein kung sino man ang nalipatan ng copyright, pwede pa niyang i-exercise yung rights of a copyright owner. Okay? Now, exception. Not all time of the author plus 50 years. And very particular to uh, uh, to our audience today, yung photographs. Okay? Photographs, photographic works, ang term of protection na binibigay ng batas dito ay only 50 years. Okay? So take note, walang protection during the lifetime of the author plus 50 years. It's only 50 years flat. Okay? And that 50 years is to be counted either from the date of publication of the photo, if ever man na it was published, or from the date of the making or creation of the photo if it was unpublished. Okay? So that is a term of protection for photographic works. Take note, 50 years only. Okay? So, Punta tayo ngayon sa ano-ano ang mga karapatan mo bilang copyright owner, di ba? And there are two main categories. First ay economic rights. And under the economic rights, we have seven kinds of rights. Now, take note, itong seven na ito ay ito yung mga karapatan mo which are exclusive to you. And these rights, they allow you to earn from your work. Ito yung mga, ito yung, in short, itong lahat na ito, they are the rights of commercialization. Diba? They allow you to commercialize your work. Pwede kang kumita when you allow others to use your work. Why? Because in exchange for the permission that you grant to others, they will pay you royalties. Okay? Royalties ang tinatawag dun sa uh, remuneration na binibigay or na binabayad sa copyright owners in exchange for their permission for the use of their works. Okay? So these are the seven main rights of a copyright owner. Una-una, the production. Okay? Okay, so you have the right to authorize or prohibit others from making copies of your works. Okay, so take note, reproduction yan. Ah. Pangalawa, adaptation. You have the right to authorize or prohibit others from adapting your work, meaning from making a derivative work that is based on your work. Anong example dito? So kung photographer ka, meron kang photo, merong lumapit sa'yo, sinabi niya na, oh, I want to create a painting based on your photo. Now, that painting is considered an adaptation. Diba? Why it is a derivative work? Kasi nakabase siya dun sa photo na kinuwa mo. So in that case, you can allow or prohibit that person from creating a painting based on your photograph. <clears throat> Next, right. First, public distribution. Anong ibig sabihin ito? Basically, it pertains to uh, the publication of your work. So kung photographer ka, you have the right to uh, 
choose kung saan siya unang mapapublish. Pwede mo siyang ipa, pwede mo siyang submit for publication in a newspaper, di ba? Or in a magazine. Pwede mo siyang i-publish online sa sarili mong website, di ba? So in short, call mo yan kung saan. Nasa sayo yung karapatan kung saan mo siya first ipapublish. ipapublish. Fourth is rental. Now this right, siguro baka hindi siya masyadong applicable to photographs. But yung sumunod is public display. Now this is very important. Why? Because it pertains to uh, displaying your work in public. Now as we all know, photographs, they can be publicly displayed. Usually sa galleries, di ba? So as your as a photographer and you own the copyright over your photos, you can choose kung saan gallery siya i-display. And usually, uh, pwede, pwede ka makipag-negotiate sa terms governing the display of your work. Now, public performance, uh, hindi to siguro applicable sa photography kasi it pertains more to uh, the performance of a work in public. So, for example, kung, kung composer ka or songwriter ka, nakakompose naka ka na kanta, you are entitled to royalties whenever someone performs your work in public. Diba? So, for example, yung artist na nag, nag-record ng kanta mo, diba? pinreform niya in a concert, then you are, of course, entitled to royalties as the songwriter or composer. <clears throat> now, the last right is communication to the public. Anong ibig sabihin ito? Basically, it means that you are making your work available to the public in such a way that the public can access your work in a time and place chosen by them. So, uh, usually, it applies to making your work available online. Diba? Kasi pag online yung work mo, diba? pwedeng i-access ng public whenever they, uh, kumbaga parang uh, they control the means kung kailan nila pwedeng, or kung kailan nila gustong i-access yung work mo. So, for example, um, if you publish a photo sa Facebook page mo, that can be considered as a form of uh, communication to the public. So, these are the seven main uh, rights. They are, the, they are the economic rights which allow a copyright owner to monetize their work. Okay? Very important yan. Second category of rights of a copyright owner ay yung moral rights. Now, at dito ngayon papasok yung tinatawag natin na right of attribution. The first right is to require that authorship be attributed to the creator. Meaning, kung ikaw ang photographer, you have the right to be credited as the photographer whenever someone uses your work. Okay? It's, it's a very, very basic and very fundamental right. And um, if you take a look at most of the copyright cases na umaabot sa korte, kadalasan ito ang issue, di ba? Nagireklamo ang copyright owner or ang author, why? Because hindi siya kinredit nung ginamit yung kanyang work, di ba? So usually, uh, either hindi nagpaalam or nagpaalaman pero hindi kinredit, hindi nagbigay ng proper attribution, okay? So uh, that is the first moral right and a very basic right of any author or creator is to be properly identified as the author of your work. Pangalawa, the moral right ay, you have the right to make alterations to your work. Natural, di ba? Kung ikaw ang gumawa niyan, you can alter your work, di ba? So kung ikaw ang photographer, you also have the right to edit your own work, to edit your own photos, di ba? You, can, you have the right to post-process your own photos. Or you can even withhold it from publication. Third moral right is, you can object to any distortion of your work which you deem to be prejudicial to your honor or reputation. Okay, so for example, if you are a photographer, and then you hire a professional editor to edit your photos. If, for one reason or another, nakita mo yung finished product and you found it distasteful or in some manner na sa tingin mo ay ikasasama ng iyong reputation, ng iyong professional reputation or honor, you can na baguhin na yun. Diba? You can object to the, to the finished product. Why? Because you deem it prejudicial to your honor or reputation. And the fourth moral right of all creators and authors I to restrain the use of your name in relation to any work that is not yours. Okay, so again, very basic. Kung meron man kumakalat dyan or kung merong, kung merong naging viral na photo na sinasabi ay sa'yo daw pero hindi naman ikaw ang kumuha nun, then of course, you have the right to uh, either prohibit the spread of that photo or to demand others na tanggalin yung pangalan mo doon. Kasi nga, hindi naman ikaw yung photographer who took the photo. Okay, so again, these are the four moral rights of any author or creator. And for tonight's uh, purposes, dito tayo magfo-focus sa right of attribution. Why? Kasi dyan tatamaan ang uh, TTTO. Okay? But first, we have to go to what the law says when it comes to authorship. And under our intellectual property code, meron tayong specific provision regarding presumption of authorship. Nakalagay dito sa section 219, the natural person whose name is indicated on a work in the usual manner as the author shall, in the absence of proof to the contrary, be presumed to be the author of the work. Okay? 
So this permission shall be applicable even if the name is a pseudonym, where the pseudonym leaves, leaves no doubt as to the identity of the author. So as photographers, ano ba ang usual way of us putting our mark on the photo? It's a watermark. Diba? Usually, uh, watermark yan. Diba? Merong, merong parang uh, maliit na usually nasa bottom left, bottom right corner na nandun yung pangalan ng photographer. So that so when it comes to photography, putting a watermark on the photo is the usual manner of indicating the author. And so pag may nakita kang photo at may nakita kang watermark, nandun yung pangalan ng anon, may, may pangalan doon sa watermark, in the absence of any proof to the contrary, it is presumed na kung sino yung nakalagay na pangalan doon sa watermark ay siya yung photographer who took the photo. Okay? So that is the presumption of authorship. Okay? And also, uh, the person or body corporate whose name appears on an audiovisual work in the usual manner shall, again, in the absence of proof to the contrary, be presumed to be the maker of the said work. So this, this provision naman applies to audiovisual works, diba? wherein yung, yung usually naka-indicate na either person or in this case, pwedeng body corporate. Kasi usually pag audiovisual works, mga movie studios ang may ari. Diba? So they're also presumed to be the author. But for our pur purposes of photography, dun tayo sa first paragraph. Diba? So putting a watermark, that is the usual manner of identifying the photographer uh, who took the photo. Now, okay, so let's go to CTTO. Ano bang ibig sabihin na CTTO? It means, di ba, credit to the owner. Now, if you will look at the examples here posted, in the, yung sa left, so this, there's, there are photos here, and then there's a caption na halagay to all the rescuers who left their own families, who have been trying their best and risking even their own lives. Maraming salamat po. Okay? And then, sa pinakababa, nakalagay CTTO. Okay, now, if you will, uh, if you will note, hindi naman pinangalalan, pila, uh, in-identify kung sino yung mga photographers who actually took the photos. Okay? So, basta pinost lang yung photos sila and then nakalagay CTTO, credit to the owner. <laughs> Doon sa right naman, there's uh, a video of a vinyl record playing. So, in-identify yung kanta. Yung title lang kanta, pati artist, okay? And this love, Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. And then, merong disclaimer, demo only. No intent for any infringement. Okay? So, yung CTTO, it doesn't necessarily have to be always CTTO ang nakalagay. Pwedeng marami siyang ibang disclaimer. Pwedeng, yun yan. Pwedeng ilagay mo na demo only. No intent for infringement. Uh, no, no copyright infringement intended. All rights reserved to the owner. Diba? Uh, there is no intent to infringe copyright. Ganun. So, there are, there are different variations. But basically, Ang pinaka purpose niyan ay you are uh, you are supposedly uh, giving credit to the owner of the original work and at the same time you are you are supposedly uh, disclaiming any liability for uh, infringement on your part kasi nga sinare mo yung work okay <clears throat> bad news for you guys na mahilig gawin ito CTTO is not proper attribution okay and it has become so rampant that in fact, uh, marami na actually news articles na lumabas sinasab, uh, trying to correct the misconception that CTTO is okay. Diba? So ito yung mga, may mga samples na dito, even sa Inquirer, meron, meron na mga articles na publish. Because um, if, you, if you will go back to uh, yung diniscuss ko kanina na moral right of attribution, diba? it requires that the author should be properly identified. When you, mean, when you say properly identified, you identify the author by name. And if you put CTTO, you are not in any way mentioning anyone by name. Diba? So uh, it's not considered as giving proper attribution. It is not considered as respecting the moral rights of the original author. And it is not a free pass. Hindi naman porkit nagilagay ka ng CTTO, it means na you cannot be held liable for any potential infringement, if ever man that the author or the creator decides to sue. Okay, so take note. It is not, it is not a free pass. It does not protect you from any potential liability. Why? Because you are not even giving proper attribution to the author. Okay, so uh, again, CTTO is not proper attribution. Now, it's become so rampant that even our office came up with this article we published it in our website last year, okay? And I want to share it with you guys tonight kasi uh, maraming mga kasagutan ang makikita rito sa article na ito, okay? So, IPO, the title is IPO Phil, the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, answers the eight, common, eight most common questions on CTTO, sharing and uploading on social media. <laughs> okay, so first, 
what kinds of content posted on social media are copyrightable. So again, very basic. The enumeration is found in Section 172 of our IP code. Meron dong mahabang enumeration of the literary, artistic, scientific, and scholarly works which are uh, copyright protected by law. Okay, so of course, kasama na dyan, photographs, uh, literary works, novels, movies, uh, drawings, paintings, choreography, uh, uh, scientific drawings, computer programs, mobile apps, etc. Okay, so lahat yung mga yan, audiovisual works, etc. They are considered as copyrighted works under the IP code. Now, when it comes to social media, the most common copyrightable works that we consume or we post or share are, of course, photographs, videos, graphics, literary works such as essays, poems, and lyrics, and even memes. Okay, now yung memes na yan, uh, there are those who argue that even memes are copyrightable kasi nga, uh, pwede siyang maging derivative work. Di ba? But of course, uh, that's a whole new other discussion. Very interesting also, okay? So second question, is there a violation even if the photo shared without proper attribution isn't registered with IPO Phil? Now, the answer to that is there can be, okay? Why? Because uh, a copyrighted work automatically enjoys protection from the moment of creation. Diba? Diniscuss na natin kanina yon. So again, registration is not necessary to obtain copyright. Okay? So hindi naman porket hindi nakaregistered yung work ay, ibig sabihin, pwede na siyang i-share rampantly without proper attribution. Okay? So again, uh, registration is not necessary to obtain copyright. Hence, even if a photo is not registered, uh, if it is shared without proper attribution, it does not stop the photographer or the copyright owner from uh, suing kung in case that he or she decides to do so. Okay? Third question, what is the purpose of the share and retweet buttons ng Facebook and Twitter if sharing is illegal? Diba? If, uh, kasi nga, we, uh, parang sinasabi natin na sharing without permission uh, is a form of copyright infringement. So kung ganun, eh, para saan pa yung share and retweet buttons ng uh, mga social media platforms? And the answer is, Actually, sharing posts or tweets per se is not illegal. It is the content shared and the manner of sharing that could give rise to uh, potential concerns. So in fact, using the share or retweet buttons is highly encouraged. Why? Because if the owner, if the content owner sets a post to be viewable to be viewable to the public, then that signifies his intent to have his word and works out, meaning gusto niyang disseminate. Okay? But of course, with proper recognition. And that giving of proper recognition can be achieved when you use the share and retweet button. Kasi pag ginamit mo yan, di ba, you are sharing or retweeting the uh, the the work or the article na nandun yung, ano, usually nakapangalan yung author eh. Di ba? So there is there is actually uh, an, a proper attribution because it shows the author as the original source. Therefore, uh, most probably, uh, you are not violating the author's right of uh, attribution. However, yung mga iba kasi, ang ginagawa, they download photos or videos from their feeds and upload it to their own accounts. So parang it's as if you are making it seem that you own or that you were the one who uh, who owned the contents that you uploaded. Okay? So some also do this with text-based content through copy-pasting instead of sharing or retweeting. So kung ganun ang ginawa, then baka magka-problema because they can be considered as forms of copyright infringement. <clears throat> okay, so is CTTO violative even if there's no commercial gain? on the part of the sharer or the poster? And the simple answer is, yes, it is. Okay? So as previously discussed, merong two sets of rights sang bawat copyright owner, economic rights and moral rights. And the scope of moral rights includes the right to attribution. So to be properly recognized as the author of a post, even without commercial gain, is an exclusive right of every copyright holder. Okay? So hindi, hindi kinakailangan na uh, pinagkakitaan mo yung shinere mo uh, in order for you to be... Uh, liable for violating the right of attribution, okay? Even if you don't gain anything from it, diba? the mere fact that you shared it without proper attribution, it's already a violation of the author's moral right. Fifth question, okay? Uh, do works posted or published on the internet automatically become part of the public domain, which means that we can consume and use them freely, okay? So, tulad na sinabi ko kahapon do sa uh, lecture ko sa CSB, it's a common misconception that once you post something online, uh, it's already free for the taking. Meaning anyone can just grab it, anyone can just download it, anyone can just copy-paste it. Kasi nga, it's very easy to do so once it's already posted online. However, that is a misconception. Not everything on the internet is free. As a matter of fact, most of the works that we see online are copyrighted. Diba? Yung mga photos, yung mga videos, yung mga, yung mga blogs, yung, diba? these are all most probably copyrighted pa yan. Diba? 
Now, if not copyrighted, then it could be the case that they are they are shared via a, a Creative Commons license. So, pag Creative Commons license, uh, usually, pwede siyang gamitin ng ibang tao or pwede siyang i-tweak or i-adapt ng ibang tao even without permission and it does not make you liable for infringement. So, basta as long as you use the work according to the terms of the license na naka-attach sa work, then walang problema, di ba? So, pag ganun yung work, okay lang. Now, there are also types of works which are uploaded online uh, under uh, parang ano yan, yung uh, open uh, open source, di ba? Usually, pag open source, you are allowed to do your own modifications, di ba? Or you, can, you are allowed to use it without permission, di ba? Um, pag, may, may mga ganong scenario. So, hindi, hindi rin at all times, hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yung work. So, you just have to be uh, careful and siguro do your due diligence to discover if meron bang copyright yung work and kung meron man kung anong klase kung anong rights ang pwede mong gawin or kung talaga bang kailangan mo totally magpaalam sa author or if not naman siguro you can rely on fair use but uh, again relying on fair use it ha- it comes with its own pitfalls kasi nga you are never really totally sure that you are uh, using it fairly until a court of law decides uh, in, in, a, in, in, in a potential infringement case okay so but once the protected the protection term for a copyright the work ends the work enters the public domain tulad ng sabi ko kanina which means that it can be freely used so again uh, marami naman tayong uh, resources online wherein you can get public domain work so pag doon yung pag doon mo siya kinuha if you use a public domain work that you found online uh wala problema doon because it again is already in the public domain okay but again the misconception should be corrected not everything that is found online is free for the taking Next question, how about sharing inspirational quotes or memes? These kinds of content go viral. So, I'm oh, sorry. So, how can I trace the true content creator? Uh, okay, so sharing quotes alone, generally, hindi naman siya infringement. Why? Because it may fall under fair use. Again, fair use is a copyright principle which says that you can use or you can uh, use portions of a work without permission from the copyright owner and you will not be liable for infringement. Okay, so pwede siya maging fair use kasi minsan uh, educational purpose siya or minsan for personal purposes lang. <laughs> okay, depende, okay? At kung meme naman siya, uh, it will also depend kung merong photo na ginamit as the background of the meme. Okay? Now, if the quote or meme was posted with a background of a copyrighted photo which was used without permission, then maaring magkaroon ng uh, infringement case doon, di ba? Okay? So, again, uh, the answer to this question basically is a case-to-case basis, di ba? Um, Tulad na sinabi ko rin kahapon, the very nature of social media actually encourages sharing, di ba? And nowadays, di ba, when something goes viral, sobrang bilis, di ba? In a matter of minutes, it has already gone around the world, di ba? Pwedeng ganun kabilis when something goes viral. So in that case, practically speaking, wala nang, wala nang panahon yung author na maghabol, di ba? Alam ka namang habulin niya isa-isa yan kung, kung sa tingin niya ay nai-infringe yung, kanya, yung kanyang rights. That is why uh, social media has actually given rise to this uh, to this thing which I call tolerated infringement. Why? Because uh, if we would apply the letter of the law strictly, then a lot of the sharing that we see or that we do in social media is actually in one way or another a form of infringement dahil ginagawa natin siya without permission. But on the case, on the part of the authors or the creators, uh, dahil nga the nature of social media encourages sharing, they actually tolerate it. And some even actually encourage it. Diba? Kasi nga, diba? it's, it's good publicity. Sabi nga ng iba, diba? whether, good or bad, or whether good or bad, it's still publicity. Diba? So when something goes viral, uh, diba? praktikaran lang, mahirap, ano ka naman kasuhan mo lahat yan isa-isa diba? for not, for not, giving, uh, for not uh, securing your permission. Diba? So usually, um, depende lang. Uh, if someone, usually when an author sees someone who commercializes the work, then dun usually nagkakaroon ng problema. Why? Because the author feels na Ah, pinagkakitaan mo na yung gawa ko. And so, dapat either you stop it or you pay me the requisite royalties. So, usually ganun. Seventh question, uh, how do I determine if the publisher of the post is the original content creator? And if the publisher is not the content creator, how do I trace the author to give him or her proper recognition? Okay? So, again, because copies and shares are happening every second on social media, diba? sobrang bilis nga talaga, it is... Uh, truly a difficult task to trace the creator of a content unless na lang na siya ay kilalang kilala, kung well-known personality siya. So in this case, you must be prudent, you must do your due diligence to treat all works as having copyright protection. So dapat ganun yung, unang, dapat ganun yung mindset. Eh, Ideally, you treat it as having copyright protection and therefore, 
either you avoid sharing when you can't be certain of who the true author is, or kung kailangan mo naman talaga siyang i-share, of course, do so at your own discretion and risk if you cannot identify uh, the real or the actual author. But kung kaya mo namang i-identify, then please give proper attribution. <laughs> Last question, pwede ba akong makulong for sharing or posting using CTTO and without proper attribution to the author? You can, you may go to jail or you may not go to jail. But it is important to know that uh, the IP code treats copyright infringement as a crime. So meaning, meron siyang penalty. And the IP code provides that any person guilty of infringing, aiding or abetting copyright infringement can be imprisoned ranging from 1 to 9 years plus a fine ranging from 50,000 to 1.5 million pesos depending on the number of offenses committed. So again, take nota, maaari kayong makulong at hindi lang kulong, magmumulta pa kayo. If ever man na kinasuhan kayo at natalo kayo, you are found guilty of committing copyright infringement. Diba? But of course, hindi naman laging puro kasuhan lang. Okay? Uh, in reality, uh, a lot of copyright owners choose having an out-of-court settlement. They usually settle out-of-court, meaning yung, diba, you talk to the party involved and then kayo na lang mag-negotiate. Or you avail of other non-litigation remedies. So ultimately, it is up to the right holders, meaning the copyright owners, to decide how to enforce their intellectual property rights. Okay, so dahil nabanggit natin ang remedies, ano-ano ba ang remedies of a copyright owner when you think that your rights have been infringed? Unang-una, and perhaps ito ang pinakamadali, and pinaka, siguro, um, pinaka commonsensical is to send a cease and desist, cease and desist letter or a takedown request. So yung cease and desist letter, either padala mo dun sa alleged infringing party or you send a takedown request to the host platform, meaning that you are requesting the platform to take down the uh, material containing the alleged infringing work. Okay? So usually, when it comes to out-of-court settlements, dito siya nangyayari yung mga di ba kasi when you see when you send a letter or take down request pag nag-comply yung party edi eh, tapos na wala nang issue hindi na kailangan so hindi na kailangan umabot pa sa korte second is you can send a demand letter for the payment of royalties so in this in this option you are not asking the party to stop using the work instead you are telling him or her na sige you can continue using the work but you pay me the appropriate royalties di ba so for example you see someone uh, using your photo without permission. So you can either send a cease and desist letter na para itigil niya yung paggamit ng photo mo. Or if you decide to allow him to continue using the photo, magpadala ka ng demand letter, demand, demand letter for the payment of royalties. Okay? Now, yung payment of royalties, this is always subject to the negotiation between the parties. Pwede kayo mag, di ba? You can, you, can, you can tell the party an initial amount and then pwede siya makipag-negotiate. Siyempre, tatrayin niyang tumawad. Depende na sa usapan niyo Yan. Wala naman tayong fixed uh, royalty rates sa batas. Okay? So it's actually up to the parties to decide. Now, a third option would be um, to avail of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Program na in-offer ng aming opisina. Sa Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, we offer mediation and arbitration services. So these services, uh, they are not uh, considered as uh, proceedings before a court of law. So meaning wala, wala kayo sa korte. Diba? Walang ano dito? Walang judge? Sa mediation, usually meron lang dyang uh, mediator na tatry kayong pag-ayusin. Diba? And pag, na, pag, pag, na, pag nagkasundo kayo, your agreement, uh, magkakaroon kayo ng compromise agreement. Diba? So yun yung magiging, yun yung i-enforce as to the rights of the of both parties. No? Sa arbitration naman, merong, uh, merong, merong, ar merong panel or merong isang tao who will uh, uh, arbitrate the issue. So ibig both parties will submit their respective uh, positions to the arbiter kasi yung arbiter mag decide Okay, but hindi siya judge. Okay, the, arbit the arbiter is not a judge. No? This, is not, this, is not, uh, this is not similar to an actual court case. Okay? So usually, pag ano, yung mga ADR programs na yan, mas ano siya, mas madali, mas less gastos, mas less hassle. Diba? So hindi nyo na kailangan mag umabot pa sa korte. Now, uh, kung talagang gusto nyo magsampa, kung talagang sa tingin nyo ay labis-labis na yung ginawang infringement ng party, diba? so you have the option of either filing an admin case for infringement with us sa IPO Phil, uh, the, ang, ang, ang merong jurisdiction dyan ay yung aming Bureau of Legal Affairs. So you will file an administrative complaint for infringement with our Bureau of Legal Affairs. If you will ask me, magkano ang filing fee? 15,000 pesos. 
Diba? So, again, hindi siya, hindi siya mura. Okay? That's why all, I always say to people na hanggat maaari, huwag na kayong magkasuhan. Kung kaya nyo ayusin na kayo-kayo lang, ayusin nyo na. Kasi at least, hindi kayo gagastos ng ganun kalaki. Diba? And, <clears throat> kung talagang gusto nyo magkasuhan, and this time, usually ang mga nagpa-file talaga ng kaso sa korte ay yung mga uh, corporate, corporate owners. Why? Because they have the means to litigate a case all the way up to the Supreme Court. So they can file a civil or criminal case with the regional trial court designated as the special commercial court. Yan, yan yung meron jurisdiction for uh, infringement cases. Okay? But again, um, practically speaking, or but siguro best practice, if you find your rights to be infringed, hanggat maaari, you just talk to the other party, you settle it out of court, ayusin ayus nyo lang, mag-usap lang kayo para at least wala nang hassle for both parties. Now, uh, another important topic uh, related, related din siya sa, ano, sa moral rights ay yung assignment and licensing of copyright. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, copyright is a type of property and as such, it can be uh, given away. It can be sold. It can be transferred. Okay? So, copyright can be assigned. When you say assigned, meaning you are transferring copyright ownership or it can be licensed, meaning you are giving permission. Okay? It can be licensed or assigned in whole or in part. So, pwedeng partially, pwedeng buo. Okay? Now, if the assignment or license is made during the author's lifetime, meaning hanggat habang buhay pa yung author, the assignment or license should be done in writing. Dapat nakasulat. Hindi pwedeng verbal lang. Pag verbal lang, invalid yun. Okay? Now, the difference between the two. So, again, copyright. Sa assignment, nagkakaroon ng transfer of copyright ownership. Okay? So, mawawalan, mawawalan na yung copyright ownership dun sa original author or creator or the photographer malilipat yan sa iba okay well while sa license naman you are merely allowing another to use your work but you retain copyright ownership <laughs> okay now also sa assignment all or some of the economic rights can be assigned so yung kanina ng bilanggit natin na pito all all or some of them can be assigned or transferred to another while sa license naman all or some of the economic rights can be licensed now the license can take the form of either an exclusive license or non-exclusive. Now, when you say exclusive license, yung taong inilicense mo, siya lang ang pwedeng gumamit. Diba? More often than not, even the original owner cannot use the work. Why? Because exclusive nga eh. Exclusive lang dun sa licensee. But when the license is non-exclusive, it means that you can license the work to one person and then give a similar license to another person walang conflict. Okay? So those are the two types of licenses. Now, when it comes to moral rights, okay, it's important to note that moral rights cannot be assigned. Okay? So, yung moral right of attribution na pinag-uusapan natin tonight, take note that it cannot be assigned. But they can be waived. Okay? So, moral rights, hindi mo pwedeng ilipat yan, pero pwede mo i-waive yung exercise mo. Okay? Except only when such waiver will injure the reputation of another author or allow your name to be used with a work that is not yours. Now, ano ang common example of a waiver of the moral rights of an author, yung mga ghostwriters. Okay, why? Because sa ghostwriting contract, di ba, usually, nakalagay doon that the, the one who wrote, who actually wrote, uh, is waiving his right of moral, is waiving his moral right of attribution. So meaning, pag pinablish yung work, hindi siya nakapangalan as the actual author. Kasi nga, ghostwriter ka lang eh. Di ba? So that is an example of uh, the waiver of the moral right of attribution. So take note, Pwede mo siyang i-wave but hindi mo siya pwedeng ibigay sa iba. Okay? And same thing pagdating sa license. Moral rights cannot be licensed. Now, uh, lastly, the assignment, the assignment is usually permanent. Meaning, if you give away your copyright, usually permanent na yan. Unless na lang na dun sa contract, merong reversion clause. Meaning that, for one reason or another, pag hindi, for example, pag hindi pag hindi ginamit ng or pag hindi na pag hindi na monetize ng transfer yung work within let's say 20 years pwede mag-revert back yung copyright sa original owner so pwede yon that, that's a valid provision of the contract but unless well unless may ganun the transfer is or is usually permanent now when it comes to license usually meron yang duration okay it's uh, it's usually limited to a certain period now usually when you when you see a license or when you read licenses you will encounter the term minsan perpetual and irrevocable. Now, if you see the terms perpetual and irre irrevocable license, this should be further clarified. Diba? Alamin mo kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng perpetual, ano bang ibig sabihin ng irrevocable. Kasi minsan, yung perpetual, it does not really pertain 
na literally perpetual, hindi na matatapos yung license. Min- minsan, meron pa rin siyang term. Okay? And minsan, pag sila yung irrevocable, it doesn't always, uh, in all cases, na irrevocable siya. So you have to uh, be clarified as to the actual uh, meaning of these words. So usually, makikita yan either sa, sa fine print or you can actually uh, seek clarification from the uh, licensor. Okay? So, yan ang difference ng uh, assignment and license. So, uh, now we go again, uh, another very important topic is yung rules of copyright ownership. Okay? So, general rule, of course, is the first one, if you took the photo for personal or professional purposes, usually yung mga self-employed dyan, yung mga freelancers, uh, or basta, even the everyday person who takes photos using their phone, okay? Who owns the copyright? It is you. Okay? The general rule is, pagdating sa copyright, whoever created the work also owns the copyright. Now, what if meron namang employer-employee relationship? If you are employed, for example, as a staff photographer in a publication, or in any case wherein you are actually employed as a photographer, who owns the copyright? It depends. Okay? Now, the employer owns the copyright if the photo was the result of your performance of your regularly assigned duties. Unless na lang na merong express or implied agreement to the contrary. So, for example, if you are employed as a staff photographer ng isang diario, di ba? Any photo that you take as part of your duties as a staff photographer ng diario na yon, ang may-ari ng copyright ay yung diario. Okay? But of course, uh, pag pinablish naman nila yun, nakakredit ka naman doon as the actual photographer. So, isibihin yung moral rights ng photographer, nandun pa rin naman. But for purposes of copyright ownership, it is the employer kasi nga, uh, all works that are done by employees as part of their duties, the copyright is owned by the employer. Now, uh, ang situation naman na pwedeng maging employee ang may-ari ng copyright ay if the creation of the photos is not a part of the regular duties. Even if you use the time, facilities, and materials of your employer. Okay? So, basta yun lang, yun lang ang kailangan tingnan. Yung bang pag-shoot mo ng photo ay part ng trabaho mo or hindi. Pag part siya ng trabaho mo, ang may-ari ng copyright ay yung employer. But if hindi siya part ng trabaho mo, then ikaw ang may-ari ng copyright. Next situation. When it comes to commission works, okay, you are commissioned to create a photographic work. So in this case, there is no employer-employee relationship. Okay? Meaning, binaya, babayaran ka lang to uh, shoot a photo, but you are not actually employed. You are not an employee. So in that case, ano ang sinasabi ng ating batas? Who owns the copyright over the photographic work? It is the photographer unless there is a written stipulation to the contrary okay so the photographer owns the copyright but the actual physical photograph is owned by the person who commissioned and paid for it okay so in this case hiwalay merong hiwalay na ownership ownership of the actual physical thing is owned by the person who commissioned while ownership of the copyright remains with the photographer unless the lang merong uh, contrary stipulation Next situation, what if you submit a photo to a newspaper or magazine or periodical for publication? Ang usual na tanong dito ay, does it mean that I automatically transfer my copyright ownership over to the publication? The answer is no. Why? Because under our IP code, ang sinasabi dito ay, you still own the copyright of the photo that you submit unless, again, there is a written stipulation to the contrary. In fact, ang sinasabi nga ng ating batas dito ay, uh, the submission of your photo constitutes only a license to publish it once. So meaning, uh, pag submit mo na photo, you are not transferring ownership, but you are merely allowing the publication to publish your photo once. Unless na lang that you grant a greater right. So you can actually grant the publication a greater right, meaning you can allow it to publish it more than once, but ang default dito ay only one-time publication and walang transfer of corporate ownership. Again, unless merong uh, contrary stipulation. Okay, so before I end my lecture, let me just briefly uh, advertise yung aming electronic copyright registration process na ino-offer sa IPOPIL. Uh, again, I told you kanina that registration is not mandatory in order to have copyright protection. Okay, so when, when you hear someone say na, oh, ipa-copyright mo yan, that's actually mali. Diba? Hindi, hindi mo kailangan ipa-copyright kasi nga, meron na siyang copyright in the first place. However, it is still uh, highly advisable to register your copyright. So meaning, you are not applying for copyright but you are registering the copyright that you already own. Okay, so, uh, madali lang sa amin, uh, you don't have to personally go to our offices to submit your work, 
you just have to email them to us. So go to our web website, uh, www.ipofl.gov.ph. Under services, click copyright and then click copyright registration and deposit. So dadalhin ko sa page na ito, you just have to download the transaction form, fill it out and then email them to uh, copyright underscore registration at, at ipofl.gov.ph. Mag-email din kayo ng copy of your work. So if you're submitting photographs, mag-email kayo ng uh, digital copies, di ba? Kahit JPEGs or whatever format. Masa, uh, digital copies. And then you pay the fee, okay? Uh, normally for single ano, single deposit of a work, uh, I think 460 for 65 ang, ang fee. But if you submit uh, if, if you submit a lot of photos, pwede kayong mabigyan ng uh, discounted rates. Depende sa kung gano'ng kadami ang isasubmit nyo na sabay-sabay. Okay? And then, uh, pag na-evaluate yung inyong work at uh, we deem it to be copyrightable indeed, then uh, you will receive an e-certificate or an electronic certificate of copyright registration. And you can also actually request for a hard copy. Libre naman yun. You, you, can, you can have uh, uh, one free hard copy of the certificate of copyright registration. Now, what are the benefits? Again, like I told you, yung ina, hindi required ang registration. But we highly encourage everyone to register your works. Why? Because unang una, pag na-issue kayo ng certificate of copyright registration, you now possess an official document stating that you are the copyright owner of a certain work, which can be used as evidence in case of infringement or ownership dispute. Okay? So tulad nga nung kinuwento ko kahapon, uh, it, can, it can be uh, valuable in real life. So for example, uh, kung online seller ka, merong gumamit ng photos mo, may, may, nag, uh, may nag-grab ng photos mo, and then kinagamit then to market his or her own products, di ba? Pag nagreklamo ka sa online platform, sabi mo na, oh, ninakaw niya yung photos ko, uh, pwede, kang, pwede ka actually hingan ng proof that you are the photographer who took the photos. And minsan, the proof that they require is a certificate of copyright registration. So kung wala kang may pahita, then you have to uh, submit other types of proof. Diba? So minsan, mahirap patunayan na ikaw talaga ang copyright owner. So kung meron kang certificate, it will go a long way into proving that you are indeed the author of your own work. At pangalawa, Pag nag-submit ka ng work sa amin, your work becomes a part of our copyright database. It can be accessible uh, sa website ng IPOPIL. Diba? So pag part na yung work mo ng database, it makes it easier for others who desire to use your work to identify and then subsequently locate you so that they can obtain your permission. So, kasi minsan, may nakita akong photo, wala namang watermark, so hindi ko alam kung sinong kumuha nun. But gusto ko siyang gamitin, so gusto ko sana magpaalam, gusto ko magbayad ng royalties. But dahil nga walang pangalan na ka-indicate, so diba, medyo mahirap. But if your photo is registered with us, then kung ako yung potential user, I can just go to the IP of, IP of Phil website. I can uh, search for the work in our database. At pag nakita ko doon, talabas naman doon kung sino yung author or kung sino yung photographer. So pag nakita ko na, pag alam ko na, pag kilala ko na, then siguro mas madali na siyang kanapin para hingan ng permission. Okay, so these are actual practical benefits of having uh, your works registered with IP of Phil. Okay, so in closing, before I end my lecture, let me just uh, give you this quote from my all-time favorite portrait photographer, si Yusuf Karsh. Uh, most probably, you have seen many of his images, uh, very ano siya, very prolific during the 1930s to hanggang mga 1960s or 70s. This is probably his most famous photo. Okay, this was taken uh, during the yung katagsagan ng World War II. Okay. So Winston Churchill and the title of this photo or the photo became known as the Roaring Lion. Why? Because sabi nila it ano, it perfectly captured yung defiance ni Churchill and ng Great Britain sa uh, atrocities ng Germany and ng Italy during World War II. So parang perfectly na captured daw siya ni, ni Yusuf Karsh dito sa kanyang portrait ni Churchill. <clears throat> and the quote is, look and think before opening the shutter. The heart and mind are the true lens of the camera. So with that, thank you very much uh, for giving me your time this Friday night. Diba? Al alam ko na Friday night, so medyo mahirap uh, makinig ng lecture. But uh, for those who uh, listen, maraming maraming salamat po. And if you have uh, further questions na ano, gusto nyo pwede, pwede kayo mag-email sa amin, uh, copyright at ipofl.gov.ph or again, kung gusto nyo mag-register ng inyong works, email them to copyright underscore registration at ipofl.gov.ph uh, the Bureau of Copyright and Related Rights has an official Facebook page. So please like and share our page. Um, Nagpo-post kami doon ng mga updates pag mayroon kami mga uh, webinars or seminars. And also, if you want to report IP violations involving counterfeiting or piracy, 
Meron din kaming Intellectual Property Rights Enforcement Office. So, pwede kayo mag-email, magsumbong sa operations.ipofl.gov.ph or mag-send ng message sa official Facebook page ng IPOFL IEO. Okay, so again, maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you again to Sir Tony for this uh, opportunity. And I hope na meron kayong natutunan uh, tonight. Thank you. Tony, uh, thank you again for spending your Friday night with us. For those who don't know, uh, yesterday we already had a session in CSB. So this is a second installment of the two-part series in copyright and in relation to photography. IPO fail through uh, attorney Valerio. Uh, we're nice enough to have two sessions with us back-to-back, -back, so yesterday and today. For those who are joining us in Zoom and also in Facebook, you can type in your questions in the chat box. For those who are in Zoom, if you want to speak, uh, just raise your hand and then we'll recognize you. Then you, we'll, we'll allow you to talk, no? So habang naghihintay tayo ng questions from our audiences. Uh, yung first question, uh, attorney, so in relation to copyright cases and photography, specifically photography, could, could you describe the, the current situation in the Philippines when it comes to uh, copyright and photography, whether attribution issues, CTTO, or fair use? Okay. Uh, when it comes to specific uh, cases involving uh, photography here in the Philippines, to my knowledge, wala pa atang umaabot sa sa korte or I mean lalo na sa Supreme Court na case involving uh, copyright and photography okay so uh, it could be due to a number of reasons baka hindi, baka hindi pa ganun ka aware ang mga tao with regard to their rights as photographers or yun nga uh, like I said Karina uh, most of these cases naman they are usually settled out of court diba? kasi more often than not ang pinag-aawain dito ay uh, either lack of proper attribution or lack of uh, lack of payment of royalties. Parang usually doon na naglalaro yan. Eh, so, pag ganun, kung nakapagbayad na, halimbawa, yung user, or kung nakapagbigay na ng proper attribution, then the photographer usually chooses to, uh, okay na siya. Parang let, let go na siya. Hindi, hindi niya kailangan mag-file ng, ng kaso sa korte. The nature of our questions, or siguro the nature of how we presented this uh, CTTO as an issue, it, somehow it's in the negative. No? Since, since we're reposting someone's work, Ideally, through the moral rights, we should give due respect and put the name as a creation. However, would there be any situation wherein a CTTO would be suggested? I'm curious, for example, yun nga, hindi mo mahanap. So is there any cases, I mean, or situations wherein we can use CTTO? Uh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it, di ba? Uh, I wouldn't advise it whether kung kahit hindi mo makita siguro yung ano, kahit hindi mo makita yung or hindi kahit hindi mo mahanap yung original author. Kasi nga, um, if you put CTTO, for all practical and lalo na legal uh, intents and purposes, wala siyang effect eh. It's as if you did not give credit then. Diba? So, uh, you're, you're actually not being guaranteed an additional layer of protection uh, when you put CTTO. Diba? Even if you claim na, oh, nag-do diligence naman ako, tinaray ko talaga, pero hindi ko talaga mahanap kung sino yung author. Diba? Uh, I, sa ngayon, I don't see any uh, practical use for CTTO, di ba? Kasi nga, uh, hanggat maari sana kung mag-share tayo, di ba? Lalo na ng photograph. Ako, I, I make it a point when I share a photo, dapat hanggat maari nakakredit yung, kung hindi mo yung original photographer, at the very least yung publication or yung website kung saan ko siya kinuha. Para lang at least, di ba? Merong, merong sincere attempt to uh, respect the moral rights of the photographer or the copyright owner. So lumalabas doon, attorney, kung gagamit ka na rin ng CTTO, huwag mo nang i-post. Kasi lumalabas, wala naman talaga. Oh, I mean, di ba? <laughs> yeah, oh, yun talaga. For, for all intents and purposes, wala siyang, wala siyang silbe, in short. Wala siyang silbe. Yeah, wala siyang silbe. Kasi nga, di ba, CTTO, di ba? Hindi mo nga lang matype ng buo. Talaga, short, 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 CTTO man. Hindi mo lang credit to the owner. Di ba? So wala. For all intents and purposes, wala siyang, wala siyang, wala siyang benefit to the one posting. Siguro yung CTTO, obviously, it's on the side of someone sharing. No? So pagdating naman dun sa creator, sa photographer, so you mentioned one option would be to watermark. Pero some photographers, they, they feel na pag when you put a watermark, it destroys the authenticity and the, ano, no, the, the material. Ako, ako ganun ako. When, when, when I post my photos, kahit nung dati, nung, nung, nung medyo active the shooter pa ako, nung talaga yung manakit ako, when I post my photos sa blog ko, I don't put watermarks. Kasi nga, for the exact same reason that you mentioned, pili ko na detract from the overall aesthetic ng photo. So, kung ganun, uh, of course, uh, on the part of the photographers, uh, there are other ways naman of uh, stamping your uh, authorship on the photo, di ba? And I'm sure that we all, we're all familiar with, ano, for example, uh, using metadata, embedding metadata, di ba? Kasi nga, uh, even if walang watermark yung photo, walang visible watermark, 
uh, on the face of the image, di ba? When you open the image, for example, in Lightroom, di ba? Usually, lalabas naman doon yung naka-embed na metadata. And usually, meron diyang uh, copyright details. Di ba? So, um, hindi lang, uh, don't be limited into thinking na uh, the only way for me to identify or to put my stamp on the work is to put a watermark. Kasi nga, as we all know, di ba? There are those who uh, prefer not to put watermarks on their photos. So, pag ganun, you just have to make sure na, yun nga, uh, either you uh, you fill out the metadata na nakalagay doon usually, meron doon fields kung sino yung copyright owner, kung sino yung photographer. And again, um, kung talagang gusto nyo makasigurado or magkaroon talaga ng additional proof, you register your work with IPO fill, di ba? Kasi meron kayong uh, pinangahawakan na certificate of copyright registration. Kahapon, isa sa mga natanong ko rin sa'yo, no? uh, I think in relation also to this best practices. So some photographers think that one way to monetize and also probably safeguard their work is to turn them to NFTs. In my network, medyo, I've seen starting last year, around November, people in the Philippines, a photographer in the Philippines, have been uh, going to NFTs. What is your comment on that, on making photographs NFTs? Uh, ano lang, siguro first, um, uh, you have to be aware that uh, if you were on the part of the buyer, diba? if you're going to buy uh, a token, diba? an NFT token, uh, you are not necessarily buying the copyright as well over the original work. Kasi nga, uh, when it comes to NFTs, uh, ganun pa rin, same rule, same general rule sa copyright na the copyright usually remains with the uh, original uh, author unless na lang na merong express transfer uh, which is somehow embedded dun sa, dun sa token. So like I shared nga kahapon din, uh, merong isang case, uh, nabasa ko siya, yun nga, yung merong, nag, merong naggawa ng NFTs ng, ano, ng magic cards. Okay. And then yung mga yung mga bumili ng NFTs, they thought na they own the copyright. So parang I think they tried to commercialize the images of the magic cards. Parang I think uh, they tried to sell copies of the images. And then uh, kinasuhan sila. Kasi nga, they did not have the uh, right to uh, sell the work. Kasi nga, they did not actually buy the copyright. So please, uh, ano lang, you have to be aware that uh, when it comes to NFTs, you are not... check. The, usually meron yung parang mga uh, terms of use. Diba? You have to check the fine print. Diba? Kasi not, not in all cases na you are actually buying the copyright as well. We also noticed that the, the Copyright Office have been very active uh, recently. You know, we've seen you in book fair. And aside from photography, you have also talked about copyright and AI. I think that's an entirely different uh, conversation as well. But would there be any similarities that we can think or consider in relation to copyright AI images and, and photography? Uh, okay. Okay. Medyo, uh, yeah, uh, it, that's, that's a whole different kind of worms. Ano? But uh, when it comes to AI, ang usual issue dito is um, yung mga AI-generated works, are they in fact entitled to copyright protection? Now, uh, it's an ongoing debate. There are those who argue na pwedeng maging copyrightable. Kasi diba usually, for example, if you use uh, mid-journey or stable diffusion or any other type of the usual, yung mga leading AI image generators, Diba? The usual way to go about it is you input certain text prompts and then the software will generate an image based on those text prompts. And then you can fine-tune further. Pwede ka, mag, pwede mo siyang, pwede ka mag-input dire-diretso hanggang sa finally makuha mo yung desired output mo. Diba? That's the way that AI, gener- AI image generators work. Now, uh, there are those who argue na yung resulting works are uh, pwede siyang maging considered as copyrighted work. There are those who draw similarities between AI software and a camera. Kasi nga, sabi nila, in the hands of a photographer, a camera is a mere tool. Diba? So kung ang, kung, ang, kung ang photo na tinitake ng photographer using the camera is copyrighted, anong pinagkaiba nun sa uh, image na generate ng, ng AI using text prompts of the user? Diba? So may mga ganong arguments. Diba? Uh, but as it stands now, under current Philippine law, under our current copyright law, um, meron kasi tayong exact definition ng author, di ba? Of course, ang copyrighted work dapat may author, meaning dapat may creator. And our law specifically defines an author as a natural person who created the work. So when you say natural person, tao. Di ba? And kung ganun ang definition ng ating batas, as it stands now, it is very difficult to imagine a scenario wherein an AI software can be considered as an author for copyright purposes. Diba? So, yan yung mga, yan yung usual, ano dyan, uh, ownership, uh, uh, copyright authorship, yan yung usual issue dyan when it comes to AI. But of course, uh, as photographers, 
Huwag din tayong matakot gamitin ng AI. Kasi, I mean, diba, we've all seen how the capabilities and the potential is practically limitless. Diba? I, nakit, lately, nakita ko yung mga examples ng mga gumagamit ng yung bagong uh, generative tool na Photoshop. Diba? Yung parang pwede niyang i-expand yung yung background ng photo. Diba? Nakita ko yung cover ng Nevermind na album na ginawa niyang dagat na. Diba? Parang gano'n. So, the, the, I mean, the, the tech is there. The potential is there. Let's not be afraid to use it, but at the same time, use it wisely and judiciously in such a way na hindi dapat na na natatrampol on yung uh, rights ng ating mga creators as well as the general public. Itatahi ko, attorney, yung generative field, for example, and an image that is in the public domain. So, for example, specifically to photos, the copyright is 50 years. Yeah. So, anything beyond 50 years of creation or publication, depending kung ano yung mapuprove mo, pag lumapasan ng 50 years, that's in the public domain. So, let's say, for example, may photographer na nagsushoot noong 50s or 60s. Ngayon, nahanap mo yung photograph niya and then you do things to it like generative fill or some derivative work. So, if I post it, I should still put an attribution, di ba? For the moral rights or not not necessarily needed. Mm, well, dahil public domain na siya, uh, when you say public domain, again, it means na it is already uh, copyright free, di ba? Wala nang, wala, nang, wala nang protection guaranteed by copyright. So, kung ganun ang kung ganun ang ang thinking then it it is also safe to say na pati moral rights pwedeng wala na but again it is good practice na kahit public domain na siya kung kaya mo namang i-identify yung author i-identify mo pa rin di ba mm-hmm. now uh, as to your question na kung ang public domain work ay uh, minodify ng AI and then a, a, a derivative work was created mm-hmm. um in that case it can be argued na yung derivative work can be entitled to a separate copyright protection as to the additional elements that were uh, added by the human. Uh, wait lang, uh, human, uh, added by the human. But for those elements na added by the AI, dahil nga under our law, an AI cannot be an author, then it can be uh, argued na hindi siya copyrightable. But the underlying public domain work, kahit anong mangyari, uh, public domain pa rin siya. Diba? You cannot make a public domain work copyrightable again by making it a derivative work. Diba? So kahit derivative work siya, kung, kung ano yung part doon na public domain, public domain pa rin siya, whatever happens. Okay. So it's 8.15, so we might have our last one or two questions. So again, to our audiences, you can put in your questions sa comment section doon sa uh, Facebook Live. And for those who are joining us in Zoom, you can put it in the chat box. Kung wala, ang last question ko na lang siguro to conclude. So, uh, attorney, when it comes to enforcement, let's say the community wants stricter rules. Since we don't have time, but I think part of the questions right now is that how do we enforce further or at least siguro elevate yung, yung status of a photographer? Kasi in a way, parang implicit to this discussion is the, the status of a photographer as, a, as an artist or an author or, or a creative agent in the sense that all creative agents, when they do an artistic work, you get copyright upon creation. No? So once it is manifested, then it, the copyright applies already. However, when it comes to CTTO, parang people are very lenient or uh, are very you know liberal in, in applying CTTO kasi somehow they feel also photographs are dime a dozen. So parang it doesn't make any difference. Pag nagreklamo, di tanggalin ko na lang. So in a way, part of it, there's also a parang symptom of the public not necessarily looking at photographers at a, as, as the status of an author or an, or an artist. So if ever, if the community wants to lobby stricter rules, lalo pa ngayon na meron ng creative industry law, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a broad question. No? So what can we do as a, as a community if we want stricter rules? Well, off the top of my head, ang pinaka ma-advise ko siguro is for the photographic community to organize and form a collective management organization or uh, or uh, what we call a CMO, diba? So I'm sure that you've heard of Philscap, diba? Philscap, ito yung CMO that is composed of uh, songwriters, composers, diba? Yung mga, yung mga, yung mga nasa music industry, diba? So ang, ang purpose ng Philscap is sila ang uh, collectively nagmamanage ng rights ng kanilang members, okay? And kasama din sa trabaho nila, ay of course, they are usually invited uh, as um, industry experts pag nangangailangan ang Congress ng feedback from stakeholders when they craft laws. Okay, so ako nakatend na ako ng maraming hearings sa Congress, deliberation of bills na kasama ang Philscap because their inputs are solicited kasi nga sila ang sila ang nasa industriya, di ba? And I can tell you sa ngayon, wala pang 
specific CMO that is uh, geared towards photographers. Or for that matter, any kind of visual artist. Painters, uh, sculptors, the movie industry, yung mga nagpo-produce ng movies, wala pa tayong CMO sa Pilipinas for any of the fields sa visual arts. So siguro, uh, that could be one way to go about it, diba? Maybe uh, organize into a CMO. Now, when you say when I say organize into a CMO, uh, it means mag apply kayo sa amin sa ITOFIL for accreditation muna. And then pag na-accredit na namin kayo as a CMO, that's the time that you can uh, manage the rights of your members. So meaning, ang primary, ang primary job nyo is to uh, collect royalties on behalf of your members para sa uses ng kanilang works and to distribute them to the appropriate members. But yun nga, uh, another... doon nyo pwedeng ilabi yung mga uh, yung mga tingin nyo na dapat mga magkaroon ang mga photographers natin na additional rights. Okay. So, attorney, with that, I, uh, thank you again for joining us this evening. I hope this is not the last time we are able to to chat and also see you around. Uh, for those who don't know, no, so attorney, attorney Valerio is also a photographer. So, nakita niya naman the way he speaks and also sa slides niya. Yung last slide niya, as in, meron pa siyang mini lecture pag natin sa photography. No? So, something historical, historical photographs. Again, thank you, attorney. Any last words before we go? Yeah, uh, again, uh, I would like to thank everyone who uh, who listened to this lecture. And also yung mga uh, dumating din kahapon doon sa lecture sa CSB. Again, thank you Sir Tony and Photography Chief Miss for this uh, opportunity. Uh, again, I, I I hope na ano to, no, na continuing engagement if we can uh, if we can uh, work together more in the future. Okay na okay ako diyan. And, and of course, uh, kung meron din tayong time, baka pwede tayong mag-shoot minsan, 'di ba? Depende. <laughs> again, so yeah, thank you to everyone and uh, have a great weekend. Everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. Until the next time, bye.